A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 27th of December 2021. So these are the list of news articles chosen for today's discussion. If you can see we have chosen five different articles. Two articles from yesterday's newspaper and three articles from today's newspaper. So without wasting much time now let us move on to the first news article discussion. Now look at this article. See this news article talks about the boosters for vaccine and analyzes the arguments put against these boosters. So today let us understand what are these boosters and the level of reality in the arguments against it. The syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference. Please go through it. As you know in the last 2 years of covid-19 pandemic various groups of vaccines have been manufactured first we have the adenovirus based vaccine it includes the astrazeneca vaccine called vaxevria then covishield which is the same astrazeneca's vaccine manufactured by serum institute of india vaccine janssen and sputnik also belong to this group then we have mrna vaccines it includes pfizer biontech vaccine called comirnaty and the moderna vaccine called spikevax next group is whole inactivated coronavirus vaccine this includes sinopharm sinovac and covaxin see all these vaccines are administered as doses and we have three types of doses first is the primary series or primary vaccination series see the primary series vaccine dose is the initial dose or initial doses of a covid-19 vaccine it is because the initial dose could be one or more than one for example covid shield has two vaccine doses in its primary series but the janssen vaccine of johnson and johnson company has only a single vaccine dose in primary series so i hope you can understand the difference even a initial dose has one or more vaccines it is still a primary series note that when one completes the primary vaccination series then they are called fully vaccinated Now moving on to the second type see the second type is the additional primary dose which is also called the additional dose of vaccine see it is a subsequent dose given after the completion of primary vaccine series so it forms part of an extended primary series but this is not recommended to all rather only to a targeted population just make a note of this point it is not for all it is only to a targeted population it is only recommended for people who are moderately to severely immuno compromised for those who are not aware immuno compromised means having a weakened immune system they are immuno compromised due to certain medical conditions or due to certain immuno suppressive medications or treatments for example they could be receiving an active cancer treatment or they would have recently received an organ transplant and or taking medicine to suppress the immune system so so these people receive additional dose because they may not have received adequate protection from their initial primary series so objective of the additional primary dose is to enhance the immune response to establish a sufficient level of effectiveness against disease and know that as of now for pfizer or moderna vaccines this additional dose is present so the people should receive their additional dose at least 20 days after a second dose of pfizer or moderna vaccine i hope you can understand both the differences in primary series there might be one or two vaccine but the initial dose of covid-19 vaccine is called the primary vaccination series and additional primary dose is given to a targeted population in which in addition to the primary series an extra dose will be given to this targeted population who are moderately to severely immuno compromised now moving on to the third type see the third type is the booster dose Now what is a booster dose see it is a supplemental vaccine dose and its objective is to restore vaccine effectiveness due to waning immunity what does this word waning means see waning immunity means the vaccine effectiveness has decreased so why is it needed 
See, emerging data is consistently showing a decline in vaccine effectiveness against COVID-19. That is, the immune response to a primary vaccine series is likely to wane or diminish over time. The degree of waning of immunity also differs between vaccine products and target populations. So, that is why booster is administered. See, data also shows that booster shot may result in increase in antibody level and effectiveness compared to primary vaccination series. This has resulted in the improvement in protection against infection. It led to milder disease as well as provides protection against severe disease and death. So overall, both booster and additional primary vaccine doses increase protection, provides a robust immune response and protects against COVID-19 illness, hospitalization and death. Also note that booster dose is administered only to a vaccinated population that has completed a primary vaccination series. And almost all of the COVID-19 vaccines have booster doses. Also, as of now, in many countries, a single vaccine booster dose has been recommended for some population. The most commonly prioritized target population for booster doses are older adults, health workers and immunocompromised individuals. See, so far we saw about various groups of vaccines which have been manufactured and we saw the three types of doses. In that first we saw about primary series in which initial dose or initial doses of a COVID-19 vaccine are provided to everyone. And second type, we saw about additional primary doses which are especially given to moderately to severely immunocompromised population. And thirdly, we saw about the booster dose which is a supplemental vaccine dose and its objective is to restore vaccine effectiveness due to waning immunity. We also saw about what is a waning immunity and we saw why a booster is administered. Just remember this fact alone. Booster doses are recommended highly to old adults, health workers and immunocompromised individuals. If you remember, we saw in our discussion, the immunocompromised individuals are given additional primary series in addition to the primary series, right? So, in case of a immunocompromised individuals, they will be administered all the three. Like, they will be administered the primary dose, additional primary dose and the booster dose. Just remember this fact alone. Now, coming back to the discussion, see the booster shots can be taken in two ways. First way is homologous booster regimen. That is taking the booster shot of the same vaccine which you received in the primary series. The second way is the heterologous booster regimen also called the mix and match method. In this, the individuals may prefer to get a different booster belonging to a different type of vaccine. According to WHO, both homologous and heterologous booster regimens are immunologically effective. Here note that India is calling booster dose as a precaution dose. And recently, Government of India announced booster or precaution dose for healthcare and frontline workers from 10th January. But the issue here is the WHO, that is the World Health Organization, has called for a moratorium. This moratorium is on booster vaccination for healthy adults until the end of 2021. See, for those who are not aware, moratorium means a temporary prohibition. So, the WHO has prohibited on booster vaccination for healthy adults until the end of 2021. Why they have taken this decision? See, this is to counter the persisting and profound inequality in global vaccine access which is leading to vaccine shortage in many countries. See, as we know, many developed countries and least developed countries have not even received the 40% vaccine coverage target by the end of 2021. But on the other hand, high income developed countries are vaccinated well beyond this threshold of 40%. So, they are already vaccinating children and implementing extensive booster vaccination programs. And as per WHO's recent data, globally about 20% of COVID-19 vaccine doses are used daily for booster or additional dose vaccination. Here we can see two extremes of vaccination, right? 
therefore to make the vaccine available for population in developing and least developed countries world health organization called for this moratorium so the first argument against booster is that exacerbating vaccine shortage and diverting vaccine supply to high income developed countries while priority population least developed countries and developing low income countries have not yet received a primary vaccination series see here the author of the article is of the view that the less vaccination in low income countries is mainly due to vaccine hesitancy and not only shortage so this is the first argument now the second argument is that the two doses in the primary series is enough to protect against severe disease see this is a baseless argument because according to a study even before omicron the protection from the vaccine against hospitalizations and death started to wane within 3 months after the second dose just imagine if this was the case before omicron assume the severity of the issue the vaccine protection will wane off quickly and there is a vital need for a booster dose Now the third argument is homologous boosters do not work that is a booster with the same vaccine does not work but in our discussion we saw that both homologous and heterologous booster regimens are immunologically effective right so this is also a baseless argument so these arguments are baseless to an extent therefore we can suggest that rather than a complete moratorium on booster doses only the priority groups can be given boosters this includes the immunocompromised elderly and frontline workers this will ensure that there is no surge of cases due to omicron and also the health care is not paralyzed due to frontline workers getting affected by the infection so this is all you have to know about this article with these learnt points now let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article this news article here is about the short visit of india's foreign secretary to myanmar the main objective of this visit is to deepen the cooperation with the important neighbor that is myanmar the notable act here is that india sent 1 million india made vaccine doses as gift to the people of myanmar so this article covers major dimension of the visit to myanmar and its importance to india we'll see them in detail in this discussion before that the syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference just go through it first of all no where myanmar is see from this image you can see that myanmar is an important neighbor of india because india shares a long land boundary of over 1643 kilometers with myanmar as well as maritime boundary in the bay of bengal more importantly it shares border with four of the northeastern state of india they are arunachal pradesh nagaland manipur and mizoram So this shows the geostrategic importance of Myanmar for India. Now we'll see other aspects of importance of Myanmar for India. Firstly, it is the only Asian country adjoining India and therefore is a gateway to Southeast Asia. Apart from this, India is seeking to enhance its cooperation with Myanmar in line with the Act East and Neighborhood First policies. Secondly we know that northeast is a sensitive region right because it is considered as a geostrategic space engaged in armed resistance and violence Myanmar here is a key to maintain India's territorial integrity by aiding in suppressing insurgents in this region Thirdly India seeks to connect the northeast with neighboring countries through land and sea to uplift the region economically by providing long term stability and peace which would discourage insurgencies apart from this fourthly india sees myanmar as being vital to fulfilling its ambition to become a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2024 See Myanmar is vital to this specifically because it is endowed with natural resources. It is in India's interest to tap these natural resources available in proximity by providing technology and infrastructure for exploration and protection. So far we saw about the importance of Myanmar for India. Make a note of these points. You can use these points as a value addition in your main answer. Now we shall see the situation that is prevailing in Myanmar. 
see for a decade the country's hybrid democracy based on power sharing between the military and elected representative was going well so in myanmar there was a hybrid democracy in which there was power sharing between the military and elected representative and it was going well so far in the past decade but on february 1 2021 that is on february this year the military seized the control it was done following a general election in which ms suki who belonged to national league for democracy party won by a major difference see the issue here is the armed forces they had backed the opposition who were demanding a rerun of the vote claiming widespread fraud but the election commission said that there was no evidence to support the claims of the opposition but unfortunately the coup took place as a new session of parliament was set to open see coup is nothing but a sudden and violent change of government So now basically Ms Suki who is the elected representative and leader of National League for Democracy has been held at an unknown location since the coup she is facing various charges including violating the country's official secrets act processing illegal walkie talkies and publishing informations that may cause fear see as of now military command in chief Min Haling is in power He has long wielded significant political influence and he has been successfully maintaining the power of the Tatmantow even as the country moved towards democracy. Tatmantow is nothing but Myanmar's military. So this person Min Aung Haling is in power in Myanmar even today. So that's all about the coup in Myanmar. Now let us move on to the important points discussed in the article about India's position and steps to be taken by India. See, we'll discuss the three major concerns given in the article because of the regime shift in Myanmar. The first is related to border security and stability in the region, particularly the noticeable development of anti-India militant activity. So there is a concern about development of anti India militant activity in the border area but this aspect proved to be not a serious concern because by handing over 5 cadres of the Manipur People's Liberation Army to Indian authorities before the Indian foreign secretary's visit the military government demonstrated its desire for cooperation it also renewed the previous pledge that its nation's territory would not be allowed to be used for any activities hostile to india so this is the first point to be noted in this article the second one is the outcome of myanmar's instability which is in the influx of refugees see several thousands of myanmar people have sought shelter in mizoram this will only be reversed by a political settlement in myanmar through dialogue so this is the second concern the third concern is from economic point of view see the escalated tensions will further delay the already delayed economic projects and these are people centric socio economic development projects for example some of the projects like kaladan multimodal project trilateral highway which includes india myanmar thailand so these projects are getting delayed due to the escalating tensions in the region so what india should do or what it has done to maintain cordial relation with myanmar and fulfill its aspiration let's see about them see facilitating connectivity is central to improving india myanmar economic relations as part of its policy for indian ocean called security and growth for all in the region which is nothing but the sahar india developed the sitwe port in myanmar's rakhine state see this port which sits on the bay of bengal serves a crucial node of the kaladan multimodal transit transport project see this project connects Southwest Myanmar to the northeast India by creating a multimodal trinity of sea, river and 
road transport corridor to boost interconnectivity. See the Sitway port is meant to be India's answer to the Chinese fronted Kyapku port which is intended to cement China's geostrategic footprint in Rakhine. So this is the first point to be noted here. Now seeing that Myanmar is crucial to its national security interests, India provides military training and conducts joint military exercise with the Myanmar army like the India-Myanmar bilateral military exercise. For example, IMBAX 2017 and IMBEX 2018-19. See, through these initiatives and exercises, India had trained the Myanmar army to be able to participate in UN peacekeeping operations. So, this is the second point to be noted here. Thirdly, to deepen the defense relations, India and Myanmar signed a landmark defense cooperation agreement in July 2019. Fourth point to be noted here is that to elevate its made in India arms industry, India has identified Myanmar as key to increasing its military exports. Along those lines, Myanmar brought India's first locally produced anti-submarine tornado called Tal Shena in 2017 and in 2019, Myanmar acquired a diesel electric kilo class submarine INS Sindhuvir which India has modernized after purchasing from Russia in 1980s. So these are some of the examples to say that India has identified Myanmar as key to increase its military exports. Apart from this Modi's Buddhist circuit initiative which seeks to double foreign tourist arrivals and revenue by connecting ancient Buddhist heritage sites across different states in India. Initiative like these connects with Buddhist majority Myanmar. See, India's Buddhist diplomacy would not only attract pilgrims from mainland Buddhist Southeast Asia and boost the country's tourist industry, but it could also build up India's diplomatic reservoir of goodwill and trust with Buddhist majority countries such as Myanmar. See, Myanmar is the only Southeast Asian country that has a separate bureaucratic division. Shared with Bangladesh in India's External Affairs Ministry as a proof to the continued importance of Myanmar to India's foreign policy. So above all these, the last thing India wants is a failed Myanmar state at India's doorstep and a weakened Myanmar falling into the clutches of China as a satellite state. So it is imperative for India to put Myanmar on the path of becoming a stable, democratic and federal union and India can also become a strong regional player by doing so through a more proactive approach, cement India's place in the region and grow into a powerful global country. So this is all you have to know from this editorial. In this editorial article, we saw the location of Myanmar, why Myanmar is important to India and we saw what is the situation prevailing in Myanmar now and we saw some of the implications of the situation and finally we ended our discussion by discussing some of the major facts about what India should do or what it has done to maintain cordial relationship with Myanmar. So with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this image. See this image is with reference to the Toda community participating in a new year ritual. So in this context we'll learn about Toda community, their lifestyle, conception pattern and dressings. Firstly know that Toda is the English name for the Toda people. But in their own language an individual of the tribe is Todan and in plural it is Todaru meaning herdsman. So in their own language, an individual of the tribe is called as Todan and in plural it is Todaru meaning herdsman. So it is clear that Toda tribe is a pastoral community and they particularly live on the plateaus of Nilgiri hills of southern India. See the tribe was once nomad but the dams and different development projects modified the land. So they are becoming a settled community in the Nilgiri district in the state. Note that the Toda language is a Dravidian language. See the Toda group has constantly been a small one. This is because of consolidated foundation of polyandry and infanticide. 
See the group encountered a disturbing statistical decrease during the first half of the 20th century. Now they are rapidly increasing in population because of improved health facilities and decrease of female infanticide. Today Toda community is twice as it was in the earlier 1960s. See one of the important fact about this community is their belief was they were the descendants of the Pandavas. True to that belief they follow polyandry. Similar to Draupadi, one woman gets married to all the male members of the family and they would all be her husbands. Several men, usually brothers, may share one wife. So when a Toda woman gets pregnant, one of her husbands ceremonially presents her with a toy bow and arrow. By doing this, he proclaims himself as the social father of her child. So this is one of the important fact or important thing to be noted with this tribe. Now talking about their residence. See the Toda family, they reside in Munt with a certain tract of grazing land surrounding it. See most of these houses consist of only one room. But many are formed by connecting two or three in a line with its own door leading to the external. You can see them in this image. So majority of the houses consist of only one room but many are made by linking two or three in a row each with its own entrance leading to the outside. Now talking about their religious belief, see Toda worship nature like Hell God, Lord Amadar and Goddess Taikirzi. According to them, Taikirzi with her brother first created the sacred buffalo and then the first Toda man. So, the Toda temple is decided to goddess Taikirzi and this Toda temple is known as Borth. See, Toda religion centers on all important buffaloes. Rituals are performed for almost every daily activities. Now, coming to their dressings, the Toda people, they wear garments that are similar to those worn by ancient Indians. They use a solidary piece of fabric around themselves which is called as pudukuli and the women wrap around a piece like a skirt and the men wears a dhoti. See their garment are covered in designs and symbols that mimic the marks left by their ancestors which they still adhere to. Now you can see their dressings in the image given here. Another important fact to note about this tribe is dancing is an important Toda tradition. If often occur at feast or as part of specific Toda rituals, only men participate in ceremonial dances. Although over the last few decades women have begun dancing for recreation, the men form an inward facing circle standing so that their arms are touching. The circle moves in a counterclockwise direction. Each step is made in coordination and is accompanied by a L that reflects the beat of the dance. So you can see how they dance in this image given here. That's all about Toras. A very important article. You can use this as an example in your main answer writing. We may also expect a prelims question from this article. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this image. This image is a reference to the rhinoceros chilling in a pool of water at the Indra Gandhi Zoological Park in Vishakhapatnam. So in this context, we'll discuss about rhinos, especially Indian rhinos, its habitat and its conservation status. See, rhinoceros are universally recognized by their massive body, short and thick legs and either one or two dermal horns. See, they are known for their poor vision. But their sense of smell and hearing, on the other hand, are highly developed. Note that international trade in rhino horn has been banned under sites. Here I am referring to Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Fauna and Flora. So under sites, rhino horns are banned from international trade. Let us see some of the threats of the rhinoceros now. See some of the threats for rhinoceros includes habitat loss, agricultural expansion, human settlement, road projects and dam construction. Especially in Southeast Asia and India, human population are rising and forests are destroyed or degraded. So this poses a severe threat to the rhino population. 
See, Asian rhinos, they mainly survive in isolated area in small populations that are at greater risk for inbreeding, natural disaster and disease. So, you can use these points in main sensor writing. You can write habitat loss as a point, agricultural expansion, human settlement, road projects and dam construction as a point. You can write inbreeding as a risk. And now moving on, see there are five species of rhinos. Each one has different characteristics, behaviors and personalities. These five species of rhinos includes Sumatran rhino, Javan rhino, black rhino, white rhino and great one horned rhino. In this discussion, we will be discussing about Indian rhinos alone. So, just pay attention. See, the greater one horned rhino is the largest of the rhino species. This great one horned rhino is also called as the Indian rhino and it is found only in Indian subcontinent. See, once it was widespread across the entire northern part of the Indian subcontinent. But now, rhino population have gone down as they were hunted for sport or killed as agricultural pests. This pushed the species very close to extinction and by the start of 20th century were only 200 wild one horned rhinos remained. See, the recovery of greater one horned rhino is among the greatest conservation success story in Asia thanks to strict protection and management from Indian and Nepalese wildlife authorities. The greater one horned rhinos was brought back from the brink. Today, population has increased to around 3,700 rhinos in northeastern India and terai grasslands of Nepal. Now, talking about its characteristics, see a single black horn about 8 to 25 inches long and a grey-brown height with skin wrinkles distinguish the greater one-horned rhino. So, this greater one-horned rhino has a single black horn which is about 8 to 25 inches long and it has a grey-brown height with skin wrinkles. See, it gives rhinoceros the appearance of being almond. One of the interesting fact about this species is that the species is lonely except when adult males or rhinos nearing adulthood gather at willows or to graze they are mostly lonely. For those who are not aware willow means rolling around or lie in mud or water especially to keep cool or avoid biting insects. So only for willowing or to graze the adult male or rhinos nearing adulthood gather. But most of the time, the species is lonely. They primarily graze with a diet consisting almost entirely of grasses as well as leaves, branches of shrubs and trees, fruits and aquatic plants. See, their habitat include tropical and subtropical grasslands, savannas and scrublands. Important point to note here is that the IUCN status of one horned rhino is vulnerable. It is also protected under Appendix 1 of Sites and it is listed in Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. That's all regarding rhinos. So now let us move on to the next news article discussion. See, this news article is about the harvest of lotus stem in Kashmir. So under this article discussion, we'll see how the lotus stems are harvested and what is the importance of the product and the local usage of it. See, first of all, lotus stem, it is locally known as nadru or nadur. It is one of the costliest vegetables cultivated in Kashmir's water bodies. The nadru can grow as tall as 4 feet under the water. See, lotus stem is nothing but a tubular shape of the root which helps the lotus plant store the energy in the form of starch. On the outside, the root is smooth and has a creamy color while internally it is white and has crisp flesh. See, it is found across the valley mainly in Dal, Nigin, Ankar, Manasbal and Ular lakes. See, they are harvested by the local cultivators in the nearby wetlands and cultivators go in shikaras. Shikaras are nothing but a traditional Golconda type light rowing boat which is mostly seen on the pristine Dal Lake. Now talking about the production of Nadru, see according to several traders following 2014 floods, the production of Nadru has declined. The September 2014 flood had wiped out seeds of lotus stems from Dal Lake 
affecting livelihoods of thousands of people and depriving Kashmiri households of this classic vegetable from the region's famed lake. See, Hyderabad-based National Remote Sensing Center, that is NRSC, had revealed that the flooding was a result of high rainfall in the catchment of the Jhelum River over a short period of time and it is found that before the floods the nadru that was harvested was white and shining proving to its freshness and quality. However, after the flood the nadru harvested is brownish and wood-like and also the production is declined because of increasing pollution in water bodies. See, clean water suits the production of the crop and it gives more yield. Now we shall see the importance of lotus stem. See, it is used in Kashmiri cuisine, especially in the traditional feast of Vaswan. Apart from that, it has nutritional significance also. See, lotus stem is very healthy being a great source of dietary fiber. It contains minerals like copper, iron, zinc, manganese and magnesium. It boosts the production of red blood cells and it has a high content of vitamin C which helps to protect our body from scurvy and it increases immunity. So these are some of the points that you have to make a note of. With these learned points, we came to the end of the news article discussion. Now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion, which is nothing but the preliminary practice questions. Now look at this first question. This question is about booster dose. Which of the following statements is or are correct with reference to booster dose in COVID-19 vaccination? Option A, it is given only to the moderately to severely immunocompromised. Option B, it is also known as additional primary dose. Option C, it is administered only to a vaccinated population that has completed a primary vaccination series. And Option D, heterologous booster regimen is not prohibited for COVID-19 vaccines. See, Option A is incorrect because this is a prerequisite condition for additional primary dose and not for booster dose. See, even for immunocompromised individuals, booster is given after the additional primary dose. So, the first option is wrong. Now, moving on to the second option. See, option B is also incorrect. Booster dose is different from additional primary dose because additional primary dose is only for immunocompromised individuals. Whereas booster is when the vaccine effectiveness or immuno response to a primary vaccine series is likely to wane or diminish over time. So the option B is also wrong. Now moving on to option C. See this option is correct because there is no use for booster if there is no waning immunity. Also its objective is to restore vaccine effectiveness. So option C is correct. It is administered only to a vaccinated population that has that has completed a primary vaccination series. Now moving on to the option D. See this option is also incorrect because both homologous and heterologous booster regimens are proposed and both have been found to be effective. So the correct answer for this question is option C. Now moving on to the next question. See this question is about Todas. Consider the following statements with reference to Toda community. Statement 1. The Toda language belongs to the Dravidian family of languages. Statement 2. Buffalo is an important animal. Statement 3. They use a solitary piece of fabric around themselves called Putkuli. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? Option A. 1 only. Option B. 1 and 2 only. Option C. 1 and 3 only. And Option D. 1, 2 and 3 only. See the correct answer is Option D. 1, 2 and 3 only. Because Toda language is a Dravidian language and Toda religion centers on all important buffaloes. See, people perform rituals for almost every daily activity and Toda people wear garments which come near to what the ancient Indians wore. They use a solitary piece of fabric around themselves called Pudukuli. So, the third statement is also correct. And the women wrap around a piece like a skirt and the men wear a dhoti. So, all the three statements given here are correct. Now, moving on to the third question. See, this question is about one-horned rhinoceros. Consider the following statements with reference to the 
one horned rhinoceros statement 1 it is endemic to india statement 2 it is listed as critically endangered by iucn and statement 3 it is the smallest of rhino species which of the statements given above is or are incorrect option a one only option b one and two only option c one two and three only and option d none of the above see the correct answer here is option c one two and three only because the question asks for incorrect statements all the three statements given here are incorrect so the answer here is option c one two and three only now look at this first statement see it is found only in indian subcontinent not only in india indian subcontinent usually includes india pakistan nepal bhutan bangladesh sri lanka and maldives so the first statement is wrong now look at the second statement the second statement is also wrong because it is listed as vulnerable by iucn now moving on to the third statement one horned rhinoceros is the largest among all other rhino species so the third statement is also wrong so the right answer here is option c 1 2 1 3 only because the question ask for incorrect statements now moving on to the fourth question which of the following species of rhinos are listed as critically endangered by iucn first one is sumatran rhino second one is javan rhino third one is black rhino fourth one is white rhino and fifth one is great one horned rhino which of the statements given above is or are correct option a 1 2 and 5 only option b 2 3 and 4 only option c 1 2 and 3 only and option d all the above see the correct answer for the question is option c 1 2 1 3 only now look at this table see all the sumatran rhino javan rhino and black rhino are listed as critically endangered by iucn whereas the white rhino is listed as near threatened and the great one horned rhino is listed as vulnerable by iucn so the correct answer is option c 1 2 1 3 1 2 and The mains questions are displayed here. Please go through it, write an answer, and post it in the comment section. With this, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, like, comment, and share, and do subscribe to Shankar Ayes Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.